So here's an extra packet for sampling distributions for the sample mean because I've been noticing a lot of people asking questions, a lot of misconceptions. So they say, I think it means this. And it's like, no, it really doesn't mean that. So here is a brief overview again of what sampling distributions mean and things we can actually say. So we start with some original population. So in my case, I picked a nice population that was right skewed. You can see this red line, that's my mean. The mean for my population mu is 4.853. My standard deviation sigma is 3.09. And just so you know, this population has 1,000 data values. So again, this is my original population. Notice your population, this is kind of set. The samples and everything don't affect your actual population. Your population is kind of the data that's already there. Now, from our population, we could take one sample. So I take a sample, I'm going to do a sample size of n equals 40. So you can see my actual data, this is what my actual data looks like. And here is my actual sample. Now notice, this actual sample, let's zoom out a little bit. This sample is kind of about the same shape as my original population. And the sample mean, notice for a sample mean, we use an x bar. So x bar is 5.31, that's kind of close to my population mean, not exactly, but kind of close. My sample standard deviation notice is an s, is 3.23, and again that's kind of close to my population standard deviation. And my shape, again, is right skew, and it was similar to the population. So this is one of the re areas where I see people saying a lot of the wrong thing. Your actual sample, for one sample, if you go out and you find 40 people and you take a sample of their data, the sample should always look kind of like the population. It's not going to be exact, but the shape, the mean, and the deviation will all be close to the population. So for a sample, the shape, the mean and standard deviation are close or similar to the population. This is good. Because we use the sample to estimate things about the population. So if this wasn't the case, we couldn't use our sample mean to estimate the population mean, or we wouldn't be able to use our sample standard deviation to estimate our population standard deviation. So again, we never expect our sample data to be exactly the same as the population data. We're just estimating, and it should all be similar. So no matter how big your sample size is, the shape is still going to look similar to the original population. And in fact, the bigger your sample size, the more it will look like the original population. The better your results will be for bigger sample sizes, but they'll still be close to the original population. So that's what happens if you actually take a real sample. So you take a sample, things look like the population. But if I took different samples, I would get different results. So I used my computer program to take eight more samples, so one sample and then eight more. And you can see these actual samples. So notice my data values, or my means. So like this mean was at five point something, and this one's a little bit less, a little bit more, a little bit less than five, less than five. So notice my means are jumping around, and the shapes are changing. Notice every sample looks quite a bit different. And we can see here in this chart, you can see the sample means. So the sample means are all different, quite a bit different. And your sample standard deviations. Now coming back to our previous page, my sample mean or my population mean is 4.853 and sample standard deviation is 3.09. So here, what do you notice about the, and we're going to do this for shape, mean, and standard deviation. So what do you notice about the blank for each individual sample? Well, what do you notice about the shape? They all seem to kind of be mostly right skew. Some of them are more right skew than others, but they're all mostly right skew. So the shape is usually right skew.
like the population. Notice there is a lot of variation though from sample to sample, which really lets us know that when we're doing real research and we take a sample and we hope it's like our population, there's quite a bit of variability of how good our data will represent the population based on which sample we happen to get. So our mean, well all of these means 5.8, 5.01, 6.14, 4.7, 4.2, those are all kind of close to the population mean, mu which was 4.853. So, I mean, they're not super close, but kind of close. Like, we could probably guess it's about five. And our standard deviation, again, is going to be kind of close to the population standard deviation sigma equals 3.09. So, again, when we look at our actual samples, the shape, the mean, and the standard deviation should all be close to our original population. That's not really dependent on our sample size n. I mean, bigger sample sizes are a little more accurate, but for whatever sample size we have, the shape, mean, saturation should all be close to our original population. But now though, so we just looked at nine different samples so far, and every mean was slightly different, the standard deviations were slightly different. So people started to say, well, maybe we should see if we can predict what behaviors our actual samples will follow. So we started to look at what would happen if we took tens, of thousands, or millions of different samples, each with a sample size still of n equals 40. So we're like, okay, well, we looked at nine samples. What if we took millions of them? And with our specific population of 1,000 values and a sample size of n equals 40, we could do a combination. And that's something we talked about briefly earlier in our class. We could do 10 choose 40. There are 5.6 times 10 to the 71 different combinations or different samples we could choose. Now, every one of these samples is going to look different. It will have a different mean and a different standard deviation. So you can see how we do not want to have to list all of these out by hand. I mean, this is far beyond a million possibilities. This is tons of possibilities. So we looked, so we started to figure out theoretical things. And we started to say, well, if we look at every possible sample mean from every possible sample, we call it the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now, this is really what this chapter is about, is that sampling distribution. And all of the things that we learn apply to the sampling distribution. Now, students keep trying to apply things we learn about the sampling distribution to individual samples or to the population. You can't do it. Everything we're going to learn now is just for the sampling distribution. So I used my computer to do just 1 million samples. It took a while just to do that. I can't really do the gazillion that there are. H with n equals 40. Here's what we get. So here's my sampling distribution. So this one is all the possible sample means. So it's not the actual data in the samples. It's the sample means. So all the possible sample means. And just to compare, here is back to our original population of the actual data. So what are some things that you notice here? So this distribution for all the possible sample means is its own data set, which means it has its own shape, mean, and standard deviation. So the shape, notice it looks normal. My original population was certainly not normal. It was very right skewed, but all of the possible sample means is normal. Now the mean, which we call mu for x bar, because it's the mean for all of the sample means, is 4.853. Now if you remember, back on our first page, the original population mean, mu was 4.853. So this is equal to our population mean of 4.853, which is quite nice. So that tells us that we kind of expect to get sample means close to our population mean. Our standard deviation, which we call sigma x bar because it's for all of the possible sample means, is 0.4783. Now that's different from our standard deviation for our population was 3.09. Notice also that this is much skinnier. So here we went from about 0 to 25. Here we go from about like 3 
to seven. Much, much skinnier. So it's much skinnier, which means that it has a smaller standard deviation. The reason why is when you take an average, you average out all of the highs and lows. So all of these high values up here kind of get averaged in and the low values get averaged in. And so you always get a smaller standard deviation when you take averages. Okay, now this standard deviation for all the possible sample means is ca often called the standard error. So sometimes people have seen that in other classes. Now we use the sample mean x bar from a sample to estimate our population mean mu. The reason we care about the standard deviation for x bar is because it tells us how accurate that estimate is likely to be. So it kind of tells us how much variability we expect in our sample means. So we expect our sample means to kind of range from about 3 to 7. Now, we have this formula, the standard deviation for x bar, standard deviation for all of those possible sample means should be equal to our original population standard deviation divided by square root of n. So let's see if that works. So 3.09 divided by square root of 40, which is sample size of 40, gives me, let's see, 0.0001. Notice that is very, oh, sorry, right here, very, very close. to what we got of 0.4783. The only reason it is not exact is because I only took 1 million samples. If I had taken all of the samples, it would be exact. So, it's not exact because I only took 1 million samples, not all the possible samples, because my computer just can't handle that. So theoretically, this is our equation that works if we take all of the possible samples and not just 1 million. So let's review things that we know. Our population can start off at any shape, it's not going to change. Our mean is equal to mu, standard deviation sigma. Now we can take an individual sample with n data values. This is the actual sample that we take. The shape, mean, and standard deviation will usually be close to our original population, either shape, mean, or standard deviation. Notice there are no guarantees for one individual sample. All of our values are usually close to the original population, so shape, mean, and standard deviation are usually close. But sometimes you might get one of those few weird samples that aren't close. Okay. Notice so far, population and individual sample have not been affected by all of these new things that we've learned, and they're, they're not affected by the sample size. Now, this is what we learned in this chapter, the sampling distribution of all the possible sample means. The shape will be normal if our sample size is at least 30 or the original population is normal. If not, if one of those two things doesn't hold, then not necessarily normal. Again, that rule of n equals 30, that's not a mathematical reason we picked 30. That's just the rule of thumb. People did it lots of times. They realized 30 works for almost all distributions. The mean, which we call mu for x bar, so mean of all the possible sample means, will be the same as our original population mean mu. And standard deviation, sigma of x bar, that will always be smaller than our original population. Oops, that should say standard deviation, sigma. Because it will always be equal to that original population standard deviation sigma over the square root of n. So, again, one of the biggest reasons I am making this is people keep writing on the discussion boards. If the sample size is big, let's say if the sample size is big, then our sample will be normal. No, that's not true. It also doesn't affect the population. So our sample size being big only affects the sampling distribution, the sampling distribution for all the possible means. It does not affect our population. It does not affect an individual sample. It only affects that distribution for all the possible sample means.